welcome to Homemade Homestead. My name is Alicia. So we just finished planting our garden and since our situation is unique, I want to give you a tour of both of our gardens and show you what we're growing this year and how we plan to use it. I figured I should explain to you a little bit about where we live. So we currently have a home in a small country town in Ohio, and we live on about a little over a quarter acre. We live next to a state route highway, so you may hear some cars passing by, or semi trucks, or even the train down the road. We strongly desire to have a home in the country with lots of land and a farmhouse, an old farmhouse with all that original woodwork and character, but that's just not where God has us right now. So because we have a small property, we need to maximize our gardening space in order to grow all the food that we need. I think that there's a misconception out there that says if you're a homesteader, you need to have a big piece of property, a big home or lots of land to be able to live this simple lifestyle, but that's just not true. So on our property here, we grow most of our food in containers and raised garden beds and the little small plot of gardening space out in the backyard. My parents live a few miles from here and they have several acres, so every summer we borrow a spot of land from them and we grow the rest of our food out there. So let's get started and I will show you around our place. So let's start here on our back deck. So first we have a crate of a variety of different types of lettuce. The second crate holds some ground cherries. These are new for us this year. I bought the seeds from Baker's Creek or rareseeds.com and they're supposed to be a couple feet tall and they're kind of odd looking. They're supposed to be kind of yellow, but uh, I guess we'll see what they turn out to be. On the opposite side of the deck, we have a deck railing box and inside we have some cat soy growing makes it really convenient when I come out here for lunch or dinner and just pick a couple leaves for a salad. We head down the deck. The first thing that you'll see is our giant shaggy looking lavender bush and we plan to use this lavender for mostly medicinal purposes um, to put in different body care products like bath salts and soaps and um, all those types of things. Right here we have a chicken water that I turned into a planter. Um, if you like the look of that, I have a blog post on how to do that if you want to check out the tutorial. This little pot here is a hot and spicy oregano. And we don't really like spice, but this is being grown to create some natural bug repellent. Over here on the opposite side of the deck, we have another chicken water. And I planted it full of petunias this year. And then we have a variety of different containers. Since we don't have a lot of land, adding containers around our deck has allowed us to grow a lot more food and herbs and flowers and stuff. So new to us this year are these two big white containers and inside them we have a blueberry plant. One is a, just a normal type of blueberry and the other one is a pollinator. Inside this middle bucket here we have strawberries. They're pretty small right now. Um, and they're not green, or excuse me, they're not red yet, but they should be turning soon. And then in this container we have parsley. It's not very big right now because I just planted it from seed. 
And we have a whole another box full of petunias. And another container. And these are the ground cherries again. Up over on this side, we have two cedar wood elevated beds. Last year we purchased them to again allow us to maximize our gardening space. So in this first bed, it, it is only calendula, all calendula. And we plan to use this for medicinal purposes. Calendula is really good for um, inflammation, inflammation on the inside and outside of you. I've used it to heal some stomach problems. I've also used it to um, decrease swelling when I accidentally dropped a brick on my foot. So it's a really, really um, great plant. And it's self-seeding, so the majority of this crate here, or this raised bed, um, it was all just from last year, all the seeds that it dropped. In the middle here, we have peppermint. And then in this elevated bed, we divided it in two. This tall stuff is yarrow. And again, that's going to be used for medicinal purposes. And then we have lemon balm. I had a tough time this year growing lemon balm. So a few of them, like these little guys right here, they are things that I grew. I started from seed. So these bigger ones, I actually bought from um, Azure Standard. And the lemon balm, it's part of the mint family. So that's why it's in a bed. But I plan to use it for some cleaning products, but also it makes um, an excellent tea. It tastes really good, and it's really good for your digestive system. So let's move over here. So this is the main part of our garden that we have on our property. So right here, if you can see, we have a trellis for our pole beans. Last year, we got some old wooden ladders from a friend's barn, and we just added some fencing, some metal paneling here, and then created it for the pole beans. So right here, you'll see the little pole beans that we have. They're on both sides, and they will grow up to be crazy tall all the way to the top. So let's start here on the right side of the garden. Right now we have a bunch of lettuce, um, a ton of different varieties, mostly the Rocky Mountain um, lettuce variety, but we also have this thing called Jericho lettuce, and it's from Israel, so it does not get bitter when it's super hot, because most of the lettuce plants over here will all get pretty bitter. I'd say if it's not already turning better, it probably will soon. So it was really nice to have this type of seed here to create lettuce that we can eat pretty much all summer long, as long as it still produces. Right here we have cat soy. My cat soy isn't doing so well this year. I'm not sure why, but hopefully it kind of picks up. And then we have kale right here. I love kale. It's such a, a great, great plant to eat. It, this one gets pretty big and it it's delicious. It's great for salads and it has a lot of nutrients. Back over in the back here, we have dill. I cannot get enough dill. If I could plant an entire garden's worth of dill, I probably would. We plan to use that mainly for pickling, um, fermenting pickles, but also I plan to dry it and put it into some homemade salad dressings. My favorite recipe is a simple Italian dressing. It calls for a lot of dill, so I plan to use it in that. If you want the recipe for that, that recipe is also on the blog. And here you'll see we have a lot of different chamomile. It's pretty wild and sporadic, and I think that's because 
we had the greenhouse over top of it. And so some of it, as you can see, is gigantic already. But then we have a couple little guys right here that are just trying to get tall enough and start to bloom. On the opposite side of the chamomile, we have some zucchini plants. Just two, maybe possibly three. Our zucchini tends to get a little bit wild, so I try not to plant as much this year. And these plants right here, there are four of them. These are all cucumbers. These first two right here, this one and that one over there, are just your standard type of cucumber. And the ones on the other side are Boston pickling cucumbers. Once they get a little bit bigger, we're going to put a trellis in between, an A-frame type of trellis, so they can both vine up each side. We'll probably just eat the regular cu cucumbers on salads and stuff, but I plan to try to... I don't know if I'll can these um, pickles, but I'll definitely be fermenting them. On the left side of our garden, we have a variety of peppers. This back row, row right here is poblano peppers. They're really good for chilies. They got a little bit of heat, but a nice smoky flavor. And then this row right here, as you can see with the label, it's a jalapeno. And that's going to be used um, sometimes for chili, different recipes, but I primarily want to use it for um, salsa, fermented salsa, or just a regular type of freezer salsa. Then we have some green peppers. There's not quite as many of those because I've been battling the birds. They keep picking them out of our garden. As you can see that there's some holes here missing plants and then this last row right here is all cayenne and the cayenne is not for us to exactly eat like in a recipe because my husband and i both don't like that much heat but we are going to use this cayenne for medicinal reasons it's great to lower blood pressure or raise it it's also great for um, inflammation, bleeding, there's just so many good reasons why we need to grow this in our garden. Last year we grew a lot and I put it into some different um, balms and different salves and stuff that helped with muscle and joint pain. And then over here, if you can see, they're all kind of still small right now. But we have eight different tomato plants. Most of them, let's see, we have a few larger ones that I plan to use for making like a tomato juice and the freezer salsa, pizza sauce, marinara sauce, all those types of things. None of them are canned, so they don't have to be any special variety. Um, and then... The rest of them, I think, are cherry tomatoes. I think some of them are like a Matt's red cherry tomato. And then a few of them are the sunset or tropical sunset or something like that. They are kind of a light orange and they're real sweet and real tasty. So this little piece right here is new to our property this year. It is a raised herb garden that we built with some retaining uh, wall blocks. And right here we have oregano and we have thyme. And they were originally over in our garden, but we transplanted them in this herb garden. And we plan to use them um, the oregano we definitely plan to use for medicinal purposes. I'll probably put it in some marinara sauce. And then the thyme right here, it makes for a great cleaner, it makes for a great chicken, and it is also medicinal. 
Over here on the other side of the earth garden, we have sage. It is teeny tiny because the birds have tried to eat it. Um, but thankfully it's coming back, so hopefully it will be bigger soon. And then over on this side, we have comfrey. And obviously we're going to use that for some medicinal purposes and maybe even use it for some um, fertilizer for our garden next year. If you'd like to learn how to make this home raised herb garden, then uh, I have a blog post um, and a link in the description box if you want to check that out. So that's it for our property. So let's head over to my parents' place and I will show you our garden there and what we're growing. So here we are at my parents' property where we have our second garden. And you will see these two bunkers here. They are planted with tons of cut flowers. Lots of zinnias and cosmos and sunflowers and all of those good things. And if you hop across the bunker, we have our TP trellises here. And the first one has hops growing in it. And no, it's not for brewing, but rather we are growing it for medicinal purposes. It's supposed to be very good for inflammation and pain and digestive disorders. The second TP trellis has pole beans. And then we have potatoes here. We also have some potatoes and onions growing out front in some raised beds. Along here, there are three rows of tomatoes, and all of these are meant for canning. They are the Amish paste, or I think some hog hearts too. So we plan to can them, primarily do canning, I suppose I'd say some crushed tomatoes and diced tomatoes. And all of these tomatoes here were started from seed indoors. And then on the right side of the garden we have okra. Let's get a close up of one of them. So you'll see okra. And we're growing lots and lots of thistles. Those are our favorite. <laughs> Just kidding, but here's the okra. We plan to, pry, uh, I guess, uh, mostly fry it. But I think I might try to ferment it and see how that turns out. And then we have four rows of green beans. And then at the very end, we have some fennel, which is really good for colds, for coughing and stuff. It makes a great tea and tastes like licorice. And then in amongst these weeds here, we have a couple of marshmallow plants growing. Well, that's all I have to show you right now. I might do another video come late summer when everything's in full bloom. But until next time, have a great week, guys.